So, one of the wildest events in the history of India as a country happened on Friday. This is our Chief Justice Deepak Mishra. According to his job profile, he's supposed to be the most morally good person in the country. Like literally, he judges everyone else. So, we're supposed to trust the shit out of him. But, four other Supreme Court justices say he's shady as hell. And not only that, they've done it in a way that has never been done before. The administration of the Supreme Court is not in order. There are many things which are less than desirable which have happened in the last few months. First of all, judges as a group of humans never hold press conferences. It's just not a thing they do. Think about it. When was the last time you heard of a judge holding a press conference or talking to journalists? It's also major because it's happening while Supreme Court is in session. Which basically means that these judges have left their benches and their courts in session to organize and attend this press conference. Now, not only is the Supreme Court the most senior legal body of the country, it's also a body that's built on decorum and ethics. This decorum is why when a statement comes from the Supreme Court, it's always a statement of the court, not a group of judges or a particular judge. These statements are never personal, which is what makes this press conference an even bigger deal than normal. It is with no pleasure in our hearts we were compelled to take this decision to call for a press conference. These particular justices, Justice J. Chelameshwar, Ranjan Gogoi, Madan Lokar and Kurian Joseph, the senior most in the country after CJI Deepak Mishra, decided they wanted to address the media on behalf of themselves because I don't want another 20 years later some very wise man in this country blame that Chalameshwar, Ranjan Gogoi, Madan Lokur and Kurian Joseph sold their souls. They didn't take care of this, this institution. They didn't take care of the interests of this nation. We don't want it to be set. So we place it before the people of this country. But why are they speaking out now? What has happened now that has basically caused them to abandon all propriety that almost comes as a default with their job profiles and take such a major and some may say career ending step? To quote the justices, the problem is that cases of far reaching consequences to the nation have been assigned by the Chief Justice of India selectively to benches of their preference. Basically, this dude is assigning super major cases to judges who he knows will rule a certain way. But what does this mean? In order to understand this issue, you have to take a look at the Medical Council of India case. The Medical Council of India or MCI is a body that permits medical colleges to be set up in the country. In the past, an organization called the Prasad Education Trust was denied permission to set up a medical college by the MCI. So when you don't get permission from mummy, where do you go? To papa of course. These guys went to the judiciary and basically paid money to get their business sorted. The current Chief Justice Deepak Mishra was involved in the case and later accused of of corruption. Justice Chelameshwar, basically second in seniority, stepped in at this point and called for a bench to try this case. Now when you've knowingly done a bad thing, how often do you only get to decide whether it was wrong or not? Never man! Exactly! So legally, it would be completely wrong of the CJI to sit in on the judgment of the impropriety case against him. But guess what he did next? Mishra decided to disregard the bench Chelameshwar had ordered, instead assigning the case to a bench that he headed. And then surprise surprise! He dismissed the case as baseless. So, let me say this again. A man who was accused of corruption assigned himself to be the judge of his corruption and then judged that he wasn't corrupt because he's the Chief Justice of India? Now the million dollar question is, can he do this? Is it legal? That seems to be a matter of debate. Basically, if one were to go on the basis of all the previous practices and customs of the Supreme Court, all the judges of this court are equal in rank. What makes the CJI who he is, is only that he is the senior most and almost like a first among equals. This means that Mishra should technically not be able to dismiss Chelameshwar's order and assign the case to himself. Okay, but that happened a few months ago. So why are the Supreme Court justices speaking out now? That's because the same bloody thing happened again. So you remember the Justice Loya case? Sometime between November 30th and December 1st, 2014, Judge Brijgopal Harkishan Loya reportedly died of a heart attack while attending a wedding in Nagpur. At the time, Judge Loya was presiding over the Surabhadin Sheikh case at the CPI Special Court in Mumbai. The prime suspect of Sheikh's alleged murder was Gujarat's then Minister of State for Home and current BJP President Amit Shah. Loya died just 15 days before the hearing, which seems a little suspect.
Well, a PIL or public interest litigation was filed in the Supreme Court to look into Loya's death and it was assigned to Justice Arun Mishra who in the grand scheme of things is a fairly junior judge of the court. Now our four justices took an exception to this and while they don't directly say it, they imply to their problem in this letter. Their problem is that they consider this to be a case of national importance and worthy of a bigger bench with more senior judges. So when Mishra assigned a junior judge to this case, the justices decided to meet with him and express their grievances. We try to collectively persuade the, the Chief Justice that certain things are not in order, therefore you should take remedial measures. Unfortunately, our uh, efforts fail. The broader issue here is that the Chief Justice of India is officially titled the Master of the Roster of the Supreme Court. Wow. Which basically means that he and only he can assign benches and justices to cases. To understand this, let's go a little into how the Supreme Court of India works. There are a total of 25 sitting judges currently at the Supreme Court. And to address the massive backlog of cases in India, these judges are often split up into groups called benches. In their letter, our four justices acknowledge that the CJI, our buddy Deepak Mishra, gets assigned master of the roster. That means he gets to decide which case gets tried, when, and by which bench. He has this role just for efficiency, not because he's a superior authority to the other judges in any factual or legal manner. Essentially, the CJI is to the other judges as the class monitor is to the other kids in the class. He's the kid who gets to tell you where to submit your homework and to sit down quietly, but he's also a class student, so he needs to follow the rules and submit his own homework too. But over the years, the responsibility to assign cases along with the backlog of cases that India has means that a lot of the power has accumulated in the office of the Chief Justice of India, like the power to decide what case gets tried when and by whom. But while all this power and responsibility were given to the title, the judiciary hasn't set up any parallel systems to hold the Chief Justice of India accountable. As lawyer Gautam Bhatia tweeted, the combination of absolute power, complete opacity and no accountability in the office of the Chief Justice basically means that for the institution to survive, every CJI must be utterly incorruptible, absolutely impartial and beyond reproach. Essentially, since there's no system to hold this class monitor accountable, no teachers, no principal, no groups of students to keep him in check, the class monitor can only ever be the kid with the perfect moral center, perfect grade, and perfect discipline. But that's an unrealistic expectation to have, because at some point in time, an individual could fail to meet the high standards set up for them. And that's a potential disaster just waiting to happen. And what Deepak Mishra is up to? Assigning a case implicating him to himself, a signing a case where Amit frickin Shah may have murdered a judge to a junior judge instead of senior bench is exactly that disaster. Bhatia also tweeted that the real long-term solution here isn't just getting rid of Mishra or calling him out, but structural reform to introduce accountability to the office of the Chief Justice and to reduce the concentration of power that it holds. Obviously, some news channels began politicizing the issue as soon as it happened. And we don't know yet what will actually happen because the Chief Justice of India is yet to comment on the issue. What we do know is that we're witnessing that the highest court in our country might be going through a civil war. If any investigation is conducted to check on Mishra's integrity as master of the roster, one can only hope it's carried out in clean, non-corrupt ways because our entire democracy depends on this court functioning with integrity. Without a Supreme Court that we trust to uphold our rights, the Constitution is nothing but a piece of paper.